Hello, my name is Manny Young and you're watching Sin TV. Hello, my name is Marcus Rowley and you're watching Sin TV. Hi, my name is Ms. McDaniel, Sin Security, you're watching Sin TV. Hello and welcome back to Sun TV. I'm your host, Philip Johnson White. And I'm Marianne Abdi. Let's start today's show with some school news. Studying here is really important because like the main goal of the event is not to just like fundraise for like undocumented students, but the main goal is, and our biggest goal is to bring the community together. So we feel like through this event, we can bring like everyone together and it's like good time overall. Pasta the Dinner it started a few years ago and basically what it is, it's like a huge fundraiser for student council in which uh, student council uses the funds from this to go towards a scholarship uh, to uh, give a scholarship to students who can't apply for scholarships because they may be undocumented. Um, it has three accomplishments actually. Uh, first off, it brings the community into the building. Um, it shows the building off. It brings the student council together to do a major project and as you saw, they did it almost flawlessly. And then the last thing that it accomplishes is obviously it's a fundraiser so that we can raise money for a student scholarship for an undocumented student to go to college. I went to a very tight high school, very close friends and but after high school, we were, you know, we disappeared from each other. And that's what I'm trying to tell them, you know, this is, this is great now. Embrace it and, uh, you know, do the best you can and, and make the most of what you got here, a good opportunity. Everybody got salad, everybody got pasta, everybody got a drink. Everyone's happy. They're the senior class recently had a meeting to check their progress with college applications and celebrate their achievements. We interviewed counselor Wendy Boatman, who gave some good advice for the senior class. Graduation rates by ethnicity, gender, graduation rates over time. The presentation was to seniors and our goal was to talk about graduation rate, help them define it, discuss or decide what a good graduation rate is and how that graduation rate plays into choosing a college. Seniors are getting acceptance letters like tons of them and they're getting money with that and they're not bragging about it so I thought it was a good time to let their peers know that we should be bragging about it and they should be telling each other what they're where they're getting accepted and which with what scholarships they're getting accepted and they should celebrate to Columbia, which is my top college but I was also specifically requested that I would do their honors program there Woo! I got accepted to Northeastern Illinois University. Um, University Luther College, St. Norbert, Norbert, the, um, Concordia. What else? Columbia. Yeah, Columbia. Roosevelt. hard at getting their applications in. 80% of the senior class has already applied and more than 40% um, are getting acceptance letters already. So now it's the money. It's the scholarships. We need to begin applying for scholarships and keep applying, I would say two to three a week, but maybe that's not realistic. Maybe one to two a week is what we should be doing. Do you like to write but can't find the time? Or do you have material that you've written but no one to share it with? Perhaps the Literary Magazine Club is for you. I went inside their meetings and saw the great work they do. I only started at the club um, because um, I saw that there was an urgent need for um, 
uh, a magazine at the school. Um, you know, Senna is an art school, uh, and there are lots of talented, creative students here. And I was really surprised when I first came here uh, to find out we haven't had a literary magazine in over 10 years. We, uh, we specifically created the club. It was a club by freshmen for freshmen um, because we thought, especially at Sen, um, a lot of times, you know, freshman year is a very hard year. You're coming from middle school. It's a big transition time. Um, and we felt that freshmen needed a particular uh, outlet for their voice to be heard. Um, and that's why we called it Voices from the Edge, because uh, it's a play on Edgewater, but it's also um, it's a way for students to get their voices out there. So it was uh, originally uh, a club for freshmen. I joined a club because since I've been a kid, I always kind of loved writing. It was a passion of mine. And hearing about a club, I kind of wanted to join it because I just wanted to share my writing. I've learned to kind of come in my show more because I'm kind of really a shy person, but being here, I kind of learned to open up more, kind of be more outgoing. A few things um, to look forward to is we're starting, um, we're going to be doing some slam poetry or open mic um, sessions. Uh, those are going to take place most likely in the lunchroom because uh, we want to draw, we want to um, kind of get the word out there about this magazine and attract attention to the club. Um, to get more submissions for the magazine. Uh, this year we're planning on publishing our first uh, print version of the magazine. We currently have a blog version online, um, which you can go to at voicesfromtheedge.weebly.com. We can all use a little help with our schoolwork. Sometimes you may struggle in a class that you once thought was a piece of cake. Cassandra Cabrera looks into the tutoring program that many of us may not know about. Hi, my name's Karen Scott. So I work for an organization called Allowance for Good. We're an Evanston-based nonprofit. We run programs for high school students centered around philanthropy, civic engagement, and global citizenship. So our flagship program is Allow Good. We train college students with our semester-long curriculum, and then they go directly into the high school and teach that curriculum once a week for a semester. So at Sin High School, we'll be bringing students from Loyola University. Uh, and I'm working with John Schmidt, who both works at Loyola in service learning and at Sen High School with the service learning team there. The program uh, takes the high school students through the grant making process. So first they start by learning about the history of their community and social issues that are present in their community. So for Sen, we'll be focusing on Rogers Park and Edgewater within Chicago. Uh, then together as a class, they choose a social issue to research more, to find nonprofit organizations that are working towards solutions for that social issue. And then the high school as a class receives $1,000 from us to grant to a nonprofit of their choice. So the college students are facilitators of this conversation. Our hope is that the students learn about their community and are excited to engage with their community around them. So first, we're um, hoping to uh, have them know how to address a social issue in their community. How would they be able to do that? How could they work with their peers to address that social issue? Uh, and how can they work uh, in their larger community, so whether it be Chicago or when they go off into college and improve a social issue in that community as well. So we're really excited to bring it to Sin. Let's now turn to the current events. Simone Smith is covering the Black Lives Matter movement and we're proud to present her second installment. Here she interviews English teacher Madeline Kobayashi's son. All lives matter with Black Lives Matter. All lives matter with Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. I sat down with 15-year-old Jalen Kobayashi, a sophomore at Whitney Young, to get his views on Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter to me just means, it just means like, we do, we do matter. Yeah. And it's not that we matter more, which we always find ourselves having to explain. Mm -hmm. It's that we matter as much. I decided to sit down with Jalen because he is a youth in a generation driven by social media. So to get his perspective on this movement that floods our timeline was crucial to help me understand more of Black Lives Matter. We talked about the impact that social media has on this very controversial movement. 
this is the social media era. This is where people who don't have no profile picture get on Facebook to type and argue with people who are Black Lives Matter because they want to argue because they just want to start something. Super predator, predator, super predator, super predators. In quote. That's the word they use to describe this generation. Every media outlet in the country thinks I'm less than human. I began to hear the word super predator. As if that was my name. So the police are like, well now, if I see somebody on this corner and they're wearing a hoodie, they're, they're up to no good, so let's just go talk to them. It's not like they weren't doing that before, but now they have even more reason to because Fox News is agreeing with them, CBS is agreeing with them. Last night, people asking for peace in Los Angeles, protesters joining hands, making a statement. It's good to know that the youth of America is focused on such an important topic, such an important movement, um, probably the biggest movement of our generation, and that we're not just focused on pop culture and things that's going on on social media. This is a very important time, and it's time for us to voice our opinions because we are the future. Like, America just needs to, like, stop sleeping, like, wake up. We recently lost another great and inspirational journalist, Gwen Eiffel. Kendall Jackson Jr. takes a look into her life and impact her work had on the world. On November 14, 2016, Gwen Eiffel passed away after a long battle of endometrial cancer. Often labeled as a voice of calm, reason, and credibility, Eiffel had a huge love for journalism. While attending an all-woman college in Boston in the late 70s, Eiffel faced discrimination in the early start of her career due to her not only being a female in a mostly male-dominant field, but also an African-American at that. Eiffel didn't let these harsh comments slow her down. She overcame those obstacles by continuing and striving to bigger news outlets and becoming the top dog there, like the Baltimore Evening Sun, the Washington Post, all the way to the New York Times. She is also one of the most prominent journalism figures to make a jump to broadcast journalism. She was the first black woman to host a national political talk show on television and was the first black woman to moderate a vice presidential debate, that being the 2014 presidential election and also the 2008 election. She wasn't your typical BuzzFeed journalist or gossip blogger. She was a well-respected figure and after 30 plus years in journalism, she never followed a wave or trend. She followed and, the truth. And I didn't fail for the same reasons why you don't fail. You work hard. It's not how you get in the door, it's what you do once you're through the door. And you make sure that you make um, friends and learn lessons from the people who are willing to help and ignore well, the, know, the and haters. Sin TV sends our respects to Gwen Eiffel, a legend that perfected her craft, but always knew there was more. Last time we showed you a little bit about how we conduct our interviews on Sin TV. Next, we'd like to share with you how we do a man on the street interview. We turn it over to the master, Reagan Ivy, for some helpful hints. Hey, I'm Reagan Ivy, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a man on the street interview. The first thing you want to do, besides already having your questions lined up, is finding someone willing to be interviewed. Let's go take a look. Oh, someone, do you mind if I interview you real quick? I can't. I'm sorry. Oh no, it'll take like two seconds. Please, I don't have please. time. I can't. I'm sorry. If you can't find anyone like right now, the cafeteria is always a good option since there's probably like a hundred students in there that are going to be willing to be interviewed. So when you find someone who's ready to be interviewed, you first want to ask them if it's okay to use for Sense TV. So Kamei, is this okay to use for Sense TV? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Next, you want to ask them their name and you want to make sure they spell it so you can use it correctly. Can you please spell your name for the camera? Kamea Spearman, K-A-M-E-H-A -E Spearman, S-P-E-A-R-M-A-N. You'll want to begin the interview by asking the interviewee's name and having them spell it out. Then you want to ask them their age, where they're from, and their job occupation or year of school. After you have those two things, you have two options. You can either present them with the question you're going to use, or you can be spontaneous and not let them know. is like when a guy spills his testosterone and doesn't actually 
like uh, do the manly thing, like he kind of wimps out of something, so he spills his uh, testosterone. No? No, not, okay. not even close, actually. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. Until, Until next, next time, time. toots my goots. <laughs> Thank you, seriously. Oh, that was good. Oh my goodness. Toots, my goodness. Ah, that's so good. <laughs>